Um, hey guys, welcome back to another video. You might hear the bird in the background, that's from my last video, but I'm going to show you guys a couple clips. Like, we can live on the moon now, because what they did is they launched a rocket. And to live on Earth, you, er, to live anywhere, you need oxygen and water. So we were trying to figure out, they were trying to figure out, um, since they're in space, like right now, NASA's in space now. So we, they were trying to figure out, like, if the moon had water or not. So they blasted a rocket into it. And to remember, we need oxygen to live. So um, H2O, so O for oxygen. And H for fuel. But there's a fancy word for that. So the fuel in, makes the hemisphere for the oxygen so we can live there. And we blasted it. And there's actually water on the moon. So here's a couple pictures. But amazing. Like NASA is getting us where we could like double a population of here half of our population go to Mar the moon now we have to do this with mars and like it's crazy how technology is because we just they're just so smart i'm showing guys videos but here's a couple more videos and pictures right now Since the 1960s, scientists have suspected that frozen water could survive in permanently shadowed craters at the moon's poles. Both hydrogen and oxygen could be trapped within the lunar soil. So to find water on the moon, scientists are looking for indications of hydrogen using the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's Lend Neutron Detector. By observing the interaction of neutrons with the lunar soil, scientists can interpret how much hydrogen is likely to be present. In order to make a detailed interpretation, however, LEND needs to observe a large number of neutrons. Because LRO is constantly moving, LEND is never over one place long enough to count many neutrons. So, to make a detailed interpretation of neutron flux, scientists add together many measurements from many orbits. With each orbit, LEND's data set gets larger, and its picture of neutron flux continually improves over time. The dark blue regions in this visualization are places on the south pole of the moon with a suppressed flux of neutrons because of their interaction with hydrogen. These areas strongly suggest the presence of water frozen within the soil. While previous lunar missions have observed indications of hydrogen at the moon's south pole, the LEND measurements for the first time pinpoint where hydrogen, and thus water, is likely to exist. By combining years of LEND data, scientists see accumulating evidence that there is water on the moon. And as LRO continues to return data, our picture of the moon and its water will continue to get better in the years ahead. And to one of the most intriguing questions since space exploration began, would it be possible to live for an extended period on the moon? To do that, water would be a critical element. And now it appears there is much more water on the surface of the moon than anyone ever knew. Here's Ned Potter. Today's discovery is something that NASA has been hoping for for years. Not only is it scientifically important, but future astronauts would find water very helpful. Water that might be used someday by lunar explorers, human lunar explorers who return to the moon. Uh, to do science on the moon and perhaps as a stepping stone out into the rest of the solar system. When the last Apollo astronauts came home from the moon almost 40 years ago, scientists decided the place was even more dry than dust. There had been traces of water found in the rocks the astronauts brought back, but everyone assumed the sealed boxes that the samples were kept in had simply leaked. But now, several satellites orbiting the moon have found telltale readings of ice in the lunar soil. Billions of gallons of it. There had been hints of this in the 1990s, but now three papers in the journal...